Praise the Lord. Good morning, children of God. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest Broadcast. It's such a, another marvelous and beautiful day that the Lord has given us to inhabit his kingdom. And so we want to come with you uh, with a message this morning entitled, Living a Full and Abundant Life. Living a Full and Abundant Life. And we're going to be using as a foundational text for our message this morning, John chapter 10, verse 10. Uh, it may be very familiar to some of you. If not, we'll introduce it to you all today. And we're going to be looking at the New International Version this morning. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and look at it with me. Let's read John chapter 10, verse 10. And it states, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Let us pray, saints of God. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify your name on this beautiful and glorious morning. We thank you for your abundance of favor and grace and mercy that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Be upon the listeners this morning, Father. Impart them with your Holy Spirit, with a spirit of life and fullness. Let fullness and life overflow into every area of their lives. Well, that's health and wealth, finances, relationships, businesses, their homes, their dwelling places, their transportation. Father, touch every area of their lives to bring life and fullness to it. And we pray this now in Jesus' master's name. Hallelujah. And amen. Praise the Lord. Again, I welcome you to today's Seed Time and Harvest Broadcast. Thanks. It's another beautiful and marvelous day. We're so blessed to have celebrated our open house with our partners who came out on this past weekend. And we enjoyed the great and wonderful fellowship. And so today we're bringing you this message of living a full and abundant life. I want you to say that with me, children of God, living a full and abundant life. We looked at John chapter 10, verse 10, where we see Jesus stated that phrase to his disciples. And it's definitely a phrase that I want to stick with each and every one of you today as we listen to this message and beyond. Again, he says to them in verse 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. King James Version says, but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly or to the full. How many of you want to receive the full and abundant life that Jesus came that you might have? There are things in this world that will come to try to kill, steal, and destroy. There may be some things that indeed do kill, steal, and destroy, but that doesn't negate the fact that Jesus, why Jesus came. He came that we may have life, regardless of what the enemy steals, regardless of what the enemy kills, regardless of what the enemy destroys, Jesus says, I have come that you may have life. And so if you've experienced things being stolen, things being killed, things being destroyed in your life, you still can receive what Jesus has promised. The purpose and the destiny for which God has for your life is not complete yet. Even for those of us who may have lost loved ones, who have transitioned from this thing that we call life into death, really we need to look at it as passing from death in this existence into life for eternity with God. For there is no weapon that is formed against us that shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against us. And death may be a weapon that's formed against some of you and your family members today. This week, we had certain partners this week had experienced death in the family. But death is not the end because Jesus, look at this text again, saints of God, but I have come, even if the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, just know that I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. In this earth that we now live in and in the life eternal, saints of God. So no matter what the equation is, the outcome is the same. Jesus says again, and I want to repeat this in your spirit so that it can be saturated in you from regardless of what you may be facing right now, what you may have faced in your past or what you may face in the future. 
I want these words to ring inside of your spirit, but I have come that you may have life and have life to the full. And that's why we're talking today about living a, a full and abundant life. Hallelujah. Now let's look at a little bit of the context of that scripture. I always want you to look at things in context, but I want um, you to be a part of a soundbite. Let's look at verse 1 of John 10. This entire uh, portion of scripture we're reading here is talking about the good shepherd and his sheep. The good shepherd in reference to Jesus and his sheep in reference to you and I and those who follow after Christ. This is what he says in verse 1. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls them by their name and leads them out. Now, in this text again, this is what's called a parable. It is a earthly story that's written uh, and uh, has a spiritual story that's written with an earthly example. And I re reference to you early in this introduction to this text that is talking about Jesus being the good shepherd and we, you and I, and those who follow the Christ being his sheep. So he's having this conversation with the Pharisees, which is a religious sect of the Jews. And he's explained to them in this parable that if anyone who claims to be a sheep comes through the gate comes into the sheep pen, excuse me, by any other means other than the gate, then they are a thief and a robber because the thief is the only one who cannot get access through the gate because the shepherd is guarding the gate. So he's saying if anyone comes in the pen by any other way other than through the gate, being granted access by the shepherd, Jesus Christ, this person is a thief and a robber. So if we try to come to God, he's saying to the Pharisees, by any other means than accepting the Messiah and following and listening to his voice, then certainly you are not a part of the sheepfold of God. By the grace of God, each and every one of us, I believe, have already accepted Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that each person listening today recognizes and acknowledges that Jesus Christ is the shepherd of the sheep. So let's read on a little further again at verse 3. The gatekeeper, which is the sh shepherd, opens the gate for, for the sheep, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. Verse 4. When he has brought out his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Remember, this is Jesus being the shepherd, leading the sheep, which is you and I, those who fought after Christ. We follow him because... We recognize his voice. Verse 5. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Verse 6. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Remember, Jesus is using what we call a parable. So they couldn't understand the whole concept of who are the sh sheep and who is the shepherd that you're making reference to? Let's look at verse 7. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. Now, in fact, Jesus is making direct reference to the Pharisees. Listen again. Let's read it again. Verse 9. Verse 8, all who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. Verse 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. And here's our foundational text. The thief, those who come into the sheep pen by any other means than through the gate, the thief comes only to steal to kill and destroy. But I have come that they, being the sheep, may have life and have life 
to the full. Saints of God, this is what Jesus is saying to each and every one of us who has followed out him. He has come to give us life, a full and abundant life, living a, a, a abundant life full of God's grace, his love and mercy. He wants us to experience the opposite of what the enemy comes to do. Even if the enemy were to come in and still kill, destroy some things, God can restore, God can revive, God can rebuild, God can replenish, saints of God, because he has come that we may have life and life to the full, being whole and complete with nothing missing, nothing broken. Even sorrow cannot leave us missing or broken because we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength and that there is the eternal hope of resurrection. So saints of God, we don't want to allow any situation, any circumstance in our life, past, present, or future, to steal the hope, to steal the joy, to steal your peace, to steal the salvation and deliverance that Jesus Christ has come to give us and that he desires that we experience in this life and for eternity beyond this life. I really want you today to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you as you meditate upon these scriptures. I want you to be able to receive the word of God deep into your spirit today that we are called to live a full and abundant life in Jesus name. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We acknowledge your sovereignty over our lives. We acknowledge that you rule and you reign over every situation or circumstances. We ask now that your power will go forth to touch, to heal, to mend, to restore, to rebuild, to replenish any area of our lives that have been stolen, killed, or destroyed. That you will bring us back to resurrection power in every area of life. Not only in the life that we experience in this earth, but that we receive the eternal promise of eternal life beyond this life. And so today, by the power of your Holy Spirit, fill each person who's listening to my voice, fill their atmosphere, shift things in their favor, O oh God. For we trust and we believe that you are the good shepherd. Help us to submit ourselves and surrender ourselves to you afresh as sheep who hear and listen and follow your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, we receive this full and abundant life. Amen.